Hi folks, it's good to be with you, love to everybody out there. Just a quick video, um, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com uh, Just a quick video uh, about my debate with Adam Rashid. Um, he's an Islamic historian, uh, he's one of the top academics in the West. And I had a debate with him on uh, Christianity and Islam and violence. And uh, in, the, in that debate, uh, I gave him a lot of opportunity to talk. And um, my, my style is when I'm going down to Hyde Park, because I had my first debate when I went down there with Mansour, it was quite... A dogfight between us both. It was quite, um, quite. Uh, it, it wasn't edifying, put it that way, from both of us. And I decided when I go down to Hyde Park from from there on, from uh, late last year or the year before, that any debates that I get, any debates that I have, I will do it in a, in a much more uh, gentlemanly and scholarly way, and I won't be as aggressive like the Islamic Dawa teams. So. That's my been my tactic. Now, other apologists might be different, and you've got to be a bit strong with the Muslim apologist against the Muslim apologist. Uh, but I, I think when it's being filmed and when it's on camera, it, it's important that we come across as gentlemen and gracious to people. And so, in the debate with Adan, I just let him talk. I let him have a lot of opportunity rather than butting in and stopping him which would come across as being aggressive i just let him talk and then if you notice at the end of the of the, uh, of the debate i let him say a lot in the debate and a lot of what he said was uh, about history and as soon as i i got him bang to write that he didn't quote any sources he quoted dionysius or somebody but he never quoted any page number he never quoted any book whereas I, in my debate with him, I quoted page number in a book, but he never quoted any sources, he never gave any page number, he never gave any book, and so I caught him out as an academic that he was not an academic of any serious repute, because in the debate he failed to produce any academic sources, whereas at least in, when I was talking I gave a book reference and I gave a page number, and when I called him out on that he went, he, he started uh, He'd been interrupting me rudely throughout the whole debate. But on top of that, he just cut me off and he just stopped me, really, from giving my final say. And I had to keep saying, no, please let me finish. And he was just kept butting in and butting in. So a lot of people might think, well, Jay, that, that was a weak performance because you, you weren't strong with him. Well, you know, I'd rather side on the caution of being nice then go over the line and being aggressive so if I f if f people feel that I've let you down uh, in that debate that I wasn't coming back at him stronger um, then you know I um, I apologize but I I believe that my tactic of being nice and friendly uh, for me is, is the right tactic uh, to deal with uh, people, I debated Ali Dawa. I was nice with him, uh, and I've been nice with people when I debate them. And I think that's the right Christian way to go about things, because if if it becomes a shouting match where you're shouting at over each other, then it doesn't really achieve anything. It's just becoming aggressive, and that's not the Christian way. We're not to strive with people, but um, but I do think that that uh, Adan took advantage of me being nice and um, wasn't fair with me, didn't treat me fair. He attacked me quite a few times personally, he attacked my character, he attacked me as a person, which I didn't think was nice. Uh, he said a number of things where he attacked me as a person, calling me a hypocrite, calling me a few things here and there. Um, but I just stuck to the point of the sources about Jesus and Mohammed and I just... And the other thing about that debate is I like to pin things down. I like to know that I've got my source and that it's accurate. So I, I'm well, I was well aware of hadiths in Bukhari where Muhammad had murdered people and things like that. But I, I've been studying the hadiths in a very scholarly way recently. 
and I found out that the earliest by uh, the earliest volume of Bukhari is eleventh century, and the the nine volumes is even later. So it's we're talking like five to eight hundred years after Muhammad, we have the first manuscripts of Bukhari. That is not really serious historical data to be even playing around with, to be honest. So he's quoting this and saying, "I've got even better sources than you, and Muhammad's done worse." But I'm thinking, well, you can, you know, you can do that, but. I'm I'm doing serious academic work here, and this is early source, and I've read Ibn Ishaq, I've checked his sources, and I'm using a Western criteria for my confirmation of what Muhammad's done, and it's called the criteria of embarrassment. That if someone has put information that embarrasses their own faith or group, then that's good historical material. So I was looking at it from a Western historian's point of view, I wasn't looking at it from an Islamic point of view because the historiography is so bad and so poor and so unreliable. And also, I'm I'm not going to quote anything unless I've got the page number, unless I've got the information to my hand. And what you found in the debate, whenever he touched upon uh, the Hadith or whenever he touched upon history, he never gave any sources. He named one name, Dionysius, but he never gave the actual book or the page number, etc. So... He, he wasn't proving anything, and, and I gave him a lot of opportunity to talk, he had loads of opportunity to talk, but the moment I nailed him, the moment I nailed him on his historical information, that he, he was not a historian of any repute, that he had just completely failed as a historian, because he never gave any sources, the moment I de did that, he started to jump in even more, and be aggressive even more, and to try and stop me from getting my point in. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I won that debate at, at the end of the day because he, he was exposed for not being a historian. And all that he was saying, his credibility crumbled and collapsed when he was exposed. He then went on the personal attack and stopping me and calling me a liar uh, and just attacking me. And, and it descended into where he was exposed. He just started attacking me as a person and stopping me from actually saying what I needed to say. So as far as I'm concerned, I won that debate. I gave him loads of opportunity, loads of opportunity to talk. And he was hitting me and battering me all over the place. He was smacking me everywhere with all these arguments. But near the end, I got him banged to rights. I absolutely nailed the guy, showing that everything he was saying had no credibility because he provided no sources. And that made 90% of his arguments null and void and showed that he didn't have any academic integrity whatsoever. And because of I nailed him, and because I exposed him, he then went on the personal attack and called me a liar. And if you look at the video where the Muslims are put up, they're all saying, I'm a liar, I'm a liar. And that's because I exposed the historian for not being a historian. That he didn't. He is one of the top academic historians, and in a debate, he didn't provide any academic historical sources. He just made one reference to Dionysius, but he didn't he did not give any historical sources. He did not provide any documentation. He did not provide a book with page number. But at least in the debate I provided a book, the earliest biography, with page numbers. I gave you the page numbers. So I was accurate in my statements because I nailed it down to sources and, and I was behaving more of a of an academic historian than Adam Rashid. Now, it look, the video looks good for him because I gave him loads of opportunity to talk. He had loads of opportunity to talk. And uh, he had a platform to spout his stuff. But I was waiting. I, I could hear when he was talking that he was not giving any sources. So I just let him keep talking and talking and talking. And then at the end, I buried him by pointing out that all this talking that I gave you the opportunity to do, you never backed it up with any historical sources. And I did it with grace and kindness. I showed him grace. I gave him loads of opportunity to talk, loads of opportunity to speak. And I was very gracious and kind. But the moment I exposed him, he stopped me from speaking and he jumped in. And so therefore I won the debate, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, because he, he descended into personal attack, attacking me and calling me a liar and attacking me as a person where, where I didn't do that. I stuck to arguments and scholarship. So that that's how I see it. I'm sorry if I let him speak a lot, but I, I just felt it was important to show kindness and be gracious to him. 
but at the end of the day he, he buried himself by not providing sources at the end and uh, I stuck to my point which was Jesus and Jesus wins every time and that's all I needed to s stick to if I got to the Quran at the time he'd have tried to get out of that if I if I'd have gone to the Hadiths he'd have tried to get out of that but you can't get out of simple things about Muhammad and the things that he got up to you can't escape from those things and at the end of the day when you compare Jesus to Muhammad Jesus wins every time. God bless you.